Okay, so I'm on set now, and they are filming, so we're gonna have to be very quiet in a few minutes. Um, but I'm just getting my hair and makeup done, which is a pretty, can be a pretty silent thing anyways. So, hair and makeup time, you guys know. You guys know. It's my favorite time. <laughs> Good morning. I, how many times can I be seen in my Me Undies dog onesie on this channel? Who knows, but it's starting to feel like a lot lately. <laughs> I swear I have a lot of other pajamas. <laughs> They're just my favorite because I get to match this man, which it's a big day for Mr. Man and for me, to be honest, because we are going on to a big set today for a, excuse me, that is not your breakfast. We are going on a big set today for a chocolate company shoot. Yeah, that's right. Now look, with COVID, I haven't been, it's been sparse that I've been on a proper set. I used to go on big sets quite often. I think in the last two years I've been on two. So it's been, well, you know, almost two years. In the last like almost two years I've been on about two proper sets. So it's exciting to go back. Everybody has to show proof of double vaccination, proof of negative COVID test. Um, of course, everybody that's not talent being filmed has to wear a mask and socially distance if possible, if their job permits it. So lots of precautions being taken, um, but I'm very excited. And Benix has never been on a set, so this is his first time and he is a part of the shoot. Sorry for um, my neighbors doing construction upstairs, but I'm just getting ready. Of course, I have my hair and makeup on set, so I really just have to eat some breakfast. I'm having hard boiled eggs with mayonnaise. Yes, egg on egg, some toast, sourdough toast, and some leftover matcha from yesterday. You guys know if you follow me regularly that I simply love to get like a vente from Starbucks and then spread it over multiple days. So that's what I'm doing. Um, geez, that is really aggressive. My car service is going to pick me up in probably like 20 minutes. So I've got to get eating and I will See you in the car. All right, the car service is here. Oh my God, it's been so long, I feel like, since we've done this meet. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get in. So exciting. I've never gotten him into like one of these. Bon chance. Pop, 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 pop. Bon chance. there he goes. So pretty much always I get a car service to take me to set. Most sets give a car service to all talent. Some sets that don't offer, my team always makes sure to request it as an accommodation simply because previous to us doing that, um, I had two different occasions where I was going to a very important set and an Uber denied me. And both of those times, I then showed up. One, an Uber denied me twice, like two different Ubers denied me. And the second time I had like a huge fight with the Uber driver. He was like filming me, threatening to call the cops. And both of those things were like going to very important sets. And for me, as the performer, like my job is to get to set. Like everybody has a job when they get to set, right? And my job when I get to set as the performer is to perform, is to is to have my personality showing and, and be me. And it's very hard to get to a set and be me and perform and put on a, a good show when I'm like completely flustered and frazzled and upset and my rights have been denied and I've had to fight for myself for something that I shouldn't. And so for that reason, if any sets I go to don't offer a car service, my team always requests it as an accommodation because with car services, obviously they're always prepped um, that the guide dog is coming and I've never had an issue with a car service, thank goodness. So yeah, I really appreciate it. And um, we've never ever ever had a set be like, no, that's unreasonable. They've all been like, oh my gosh, absolutely, of course, whatever we can do to make sure Molly and her guide dog like arrive safely and comfortably and feel good. So I thought I'd share that. Okay, so I'm on set now and they are filming, so we're gonna have to be very quiet in a few minutes, um, but I'm just getting my hair and makeup done, which is a pretty, can be a pretty silent thing anyways. So natural makeup, hopefully waves, I think. I don't know, we haven't talked about it, but yeah. Hair and makeup time, you guys know. You guys know. It's my favorite time. <laughs> Here we're seeing some speed ramp footage of Molly getting her hair and makeup done with a very loyal Benix laying by her side. Hair and makeup is done. I'm currently in a bathroom. I'm going to be changing into my outfit. So it's really cool because they really wanted us to like feel like ourselves. And so they have a stylist on set, but they had us bring our own clothes. They kind of gave us some parameters. So you know me, I brought a big bag with me and I just said stylist can pick anything. I love it all. So this is what she picked because it's kind of a Christmas shoot. Um, I have these black jeans here. 
and then this fluffy dark green cardigan with this shiny dark green top. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> there she goes. I wouldn't have actually thought to pair this shiny top under the fluffy green cardigan, but I think it's gonna look really cute. So stylist might have helped me get a whole new look whole new outfit out of my own closet. Also just a pro tip, if you're ever going to a set and getting your hair and makeup done, wear something that is a zip front um, because then after you get your hair and makeup done and you're changing into your actual outfit for the shoot, it's easy to get it off over your head or better is a full zip, but I didn't have anything. So I just wore my quarter zip, but hoodies or like any high necked top is very difficult because it can like ruin your makeup, ruin your hair, so. I've learned after many years on set, the zip front. Outfit is on, feeling comfortable, feeling cute. Bennix is wearing a red bandana to be Christmas spirited. And I have my sparkly black mole and dark heart. Here we're seeing some sped up B-roll footage of Molly getting settled in on set about to start filming. We're about to start rolling for my sit down interview. Bennix is having a great first day on his first ever set. He's just laying peacefully beside me. And here we're seeing more B-roll footage of set. We can see Molly through the professional on-set monitors and Bennix laying patiently while Molly gets the job done. He was not happy to be away from you. I know, I could hear him moaning he behind the set. Moaning and groaning. So, look at the, look at the, all the little tail. Was it, oh, the, the tail's wagging again. Last minute, I was like, you know what? And Kate, cause he wasn't in the shot. So I was like, well, if he like shakes or itches or anything, it'll ruin our audio for the take. So I was like, you know what, mom? Why don't you just take him back set? And um, yeah, I could hear him going, uh, uh. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, sir, what's with the muss and fuzz? And then when he came and was reunited with me, boy, was that a moment. He was just overjoyed. You're such a sweetheart, babe. Lunch time. Yeah. Very Mediterranean food. Delish. I guess, no, it's good. It's more Middle Eastern. I feel like there's a lot of crossover, but I'd say it's more Middle Eastern. Delish. So, months back, before I ever got Benny, my mom got me for Easter a hedgehog from Purdy's Chocolate. When I got Benix home, within five minutes, like his first night home, within five minutes of exploring my apartment, he had found my hedgehog. I didn't even know where it was. He found it, he was traipsing around with it, and ever since it has been his favorite toy. Purdy's is replacing the one he stole with a new fresh one for me, and he is somehow yet still thinking it is for him. He wants to run away and play with it Molly, let him go. Give him his little moment. Um, he's 75% Bernese Mountain Dog. There we go. There's also chocolate for the humans. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Yogi. Chocolate for the humans. Chocolate for the humans. Lovely. This is Yogi, by the way. Uh, my mom has described his sweater to me, which sounds absolutely fabulous. And it's also, gorgeous. his real name is not just Yogi, it's Super Yogi. Super, Super Yogi. Yogi. It's my birth name. It's in my Seriously? ID. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Super Yogi is his legal name. I know. Right yeah. now. No, my birth name is Super Yogi. <laughs> and, and his dog is named Bear, so it's Yogi and Bear. Yeah. And I didn't even name him. He came named. So it's like oh, destiny. Meant to so be. there's some chocolate for you to take home. Oh my gosh. And I'll just leave it here. Well, I won't home. say no. You will be sharing with your mother, Mom. <laughs> Hopefully. My, my mom yeah. literally was like, oh my God, I really hope they have the chocolate on set because like, I don't know what I'm going to do if I have to sit and listen to you talk about chocolate yeah. all day no, and not eat, eat it. <laughs> Okay, so I want to introduce you guys to Ramya. Ramya was one of the people who helped consult on the Purdy's Accessible Braille Chocolate Box. Do you want to introduce yourself, who you are, Hi. what you do? Yes, okay, so I uh, work for AMI, so some people might recognize me from there. I'm on Kelly and Company, co-hosting with Kelly McDonald. Uh, but here, it was a lot of fun, because not only did we get to eat chocolate, but we got to talk about and decide how it's presented to the blind low vision community, etc. And you're also low vision, of course. Yes, absolutely, yeah. I'm vision myself so I have a lot of experience with um, 
access as well as access consulting, but I gotta say, this has been a really fun experience. I mean, who doesn't want to consult on how to make chocolate accessible? Like, exactly. anything to make accessible, that's a pretty fun thing to help exactly. make accessible. Exactly. Plus, uh, so far I've been pretty good, and I don't have a stomach ache from eating too many hedgehogs. You? Oh. <laughs> I'm planning to go home and eat far more hedgehogs. Exactly. Yeah, I have stomach aches on our own time. Exactly. <laughs> off the clock, off the clock hedgehog tummy aches. Exactly. And where did you two first meet? Well, we first met years ago when we were skiing. Yes, skiing absolutely. Skiing for the blind. Yeah, the Toronto Ski Hawks in uh, Toronto <laughs> is where I met you years for the ago. first time. Yeah, yeah. And it was a very uh, short experience, but you know, we follow you on YouTube. We know what you're up to. Oh, thank you. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's such a small world, you know, it's a very small community. So I figured working between, like working for AMI and being in accessibility, like we had probably crossed paths at some point Absolutely. since I was originally yeah. from Toronto. So yeah. I was like, we probably yeah. know each other. And lo and behold, we do. Yeah, I showed up at AMI um, after you went to LA. So I knew you through the grapevine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm home. I'm exhausted, but I still got a lot of work to do. So I'm taking a recoup, just laying here in bed watching some YouTube. Um, mm. Oh my God, what the hell is this? This is so this good. This is a sweet Georgie Brown. Okay. There we go. Okay, sweet Georgie Brown. My favorite's the hedgehog, but damn. This is so good. It's a two pack. My mom's having the other one. Wow. Phenomenal. This video isn't sponsored. No, it isn't. I just wanted to share Benny's first day on a set with you guys. And I'm gonna, I have a lot more to tell you guys. So don't go anywhere, but um, I need a break first. Okay, I've had some time. I've come back to life. I'm in my comfy clothes, got a fluffy hot water bottle, had some tea. Ignore the mess in the background. It's been a long day. Um, you forget after like not being on a big set for so long how exhausting it is. And this was actually like a very short day on set. Often when I'm on set, it's like 10, 12, 14 hours. This was only four hours, but I'm still exhausted somehow. Um, the shoot went really quick, really smooth. Uh, everybody was so nice. It's honestly been a great project to work on. Again, this like video isn't sponsored by them, um, but I did work with Purdy's Chocolate which if you've never tried it, it's fire. I've been eating it my whole life. Get you some if you can. But um, they, for the holidays, came out with a holiday braille box of chocolates, which is amazing. Um, I don't have one here to show, but I will insert some B-roll because I will have gotten one in my hands. I had one on set to play with, but um, I don't have one home here with me to show you, but I will in a few weeks before this video goes live. So I'll, I'll put some B-roll here. Basically the box is brailled um, and it says feel the joy, which is so cute. It says left and right. So you know you have the correct direction. Um, and then inside they have a braille legend. So you know when you get a box of mixed chocolates It has like all the different images and it tells you which one's which as a blind person I've never been able to pick my own chocolates. Um I've always you know Because usually I don't eat, eat a box of mixed chocolates alone I'm usually with a bunch of friends and they all open it and see what's what and help me find chocolates But the experience of doing things on your own and like just having that little bit of independence is so incredible and it's nice to have that without having to whip out a phone. Yes, I can always whip out my phone and use an app to help me, but there's something about just being able to to touch it, you know, to like to not have to rely on technology to do something that technology isn't necessary for. Um, and they do have a QR code on the legend that you can also scan and it's screen reader friendly so you can read it through that as well and it's also read aloud in nine different languages so it's inclusive to more than just blind people um, it means that lots of different people who don't read English can still enjoy this box of chocolates but the legend is all in braille so it has all the different names of all the different chocolates and it has it all categorized as to where it is so you can feel in the box and find the correct one um, which is amazing. I've, it's never been done before as far as I'm aware. I've never experienced it. So to be honest, it was quite emotional. I cried when I got to like feel it for the first time. Um, it's not perfect. I gave them some feedback if they're going to do this again. I gave them some feedback as to how I think they could improve it further. They did consult blind people, but of course, you know, everybody's going to have different opinions. So I just shared kind of from my perspective, some things I think they could improve upon, but overall, like, as I always say, I think any step in the right direction is a step worth celebrating, and to me, this is huge. 
and not only um you know did they consult blind people have blind people like myself involved in the promotional materials um but they also like just as a team were incredibly focused on on being inclusive uh it was the first time i've had a zoom call with a client where the first question they made sure to ask me is like, how would you like us to refer to your disability? What word makes you feel comfortable? And I love that because all the time I have people who like tiptoe around it and don't want to say the wrong thing and it can get really awkward. I've had to, <laughs> Benix is drinking water. Um, I've had to like stop people in meetings before and be like, just so you know, the correct term is blind. Or when people are saying things like differently abled, I'll stop them and be like, hey, by the way, I don't really like that term. Or when people are like dancing around it, being like, I know you can't really see that well or you're sight impaired or like dancing around it. And so it was nice to have somebody just be like, hey, what word makes you feel comfortable? So we can just all use that word. So I thought that was really cool. And they also like all made an effort to describe their visual surroundings and what they look like. And I know that not all blind people would want that or appreciate it or feel it necessary. I've only ever had two calls where that was done, this call and a Netflix event that I spoke at virtually. And <laughs> how thirsty are you? In the background. <laughs> You're almost done? Well, he said, yeah, I am now because the, the bowl's done. <laughs> I think he's looking for his dinner, maybe. No, he just ate. Oh. Kelly does that, too. They lick the bowl one more time yeah. just in case there's a little, little bit there. You're so silly. To be honest, I appreciated it both times, but I'm somebody who, like, really, really, really likes the visuals. Like, I all the time have sighted people in my life describing things around me, what people look like, what a restaurant looks like what the lake looks like like i'm always asking sighted people to describe things to me because i gain value from it not all blind people would so i think if you're in that situation where you're discussing something with a blind person on a call like that like you can always ask would you like me to describe you know my surroundings i think for me it's nice because i feel like i've been on so many calls where like a joke is made about where somebody's sitting or a comment is made about how nice somebody's top is and i'm just sitting there like and because they all described themselves and their surroundings, I didn't miss out when comments like that were made, which made me feel included. Um, but it's all personal preference. I enjoyed it, but not everybody would. Yeah, so overall, like I think for me, I, I definitely saw that for, for these people working on this project, it, it wasn't just like a gimmick. Um, this is something they put a lot of th time and thought and care into. And um, Again, I really, really hope that they don't just do this again for next holiday, but that this becomes something they carry year round um, and that they take on some of some of the feedback from myself and some others uh, to improve it even further for the future. And it was really fun bringing Benix on his first set because my guide dog Gallup, who's retired now, we all know and love, um, has gone on so many sets, but Benix, this was his first time getting to come to a big set and it was really funny because I decided to have him sit with my mom because he wasn't going to be in the shot and i didn't want to like end up having to redo shots because the audio got ruined because benix like shifted or scratched or started snoring in his sleep or kicked a thing with his paw when he was moving or something because um you know audio in sets like this is super sensitive so i was like you know what if he's not even in the shot and i'm sitting this whole time there's really no point in having him here so I had him go sit with my mom and he like he was only like 25 30 feet away from me he could see me he could hear me but oh my goodness he was not pleased i could hear him go uh, uh, he was so uh, restless. i was like i could oh hear God. him I was like, we're supposed to be so quiet and sad and it was just like this little clanking the moving uh, i'm not pleased about this <laughs> he was very unhappy and at one point so I, cute, like i said started crying i got emotional because again it's like there's very few people in life who can understand being a 27 year old <laughs> sorry your socks are there they were molly socks on the table right there <laughs> i was wearing these earlier they've got bees in them i think that they were sent by a follower <laughs> they were um years ago but yeah there's not many people in the world who can understand like being 27 and still getting to do things for the first time. Things that everybody else has gotten to do their entire life and take for granted. Like I always tell the story about being 15 years old, 14, 15 years old, when the first iPod with voiceover came out. And for the first time in my life, getting to pick the song I wanted to listen to. 
you know? Like that's a really important basic thing, you know? Um, and like we could all think of a moment when we really wanted to listen to a certain song or when we were in a certain mood and we wanted to listen to something that reflects that mood or that helps us get out of that mood. And I could never do that until I was like 15 years old, 14, 15 years old. And you know, things like being able to figure out what shampoo and what conditioner is, is what. That's something that like, I would always kind of have to ask a sighted person and then like, you know, put the hair elastic over it or like buy two different shaped bottles or put one on the left side of my bathtub and one on the right side until like I had the first experience with the herbal essence bottles that are accessible. That happened in my 20s. You know, like these are things that, that people are so used to doing every single day and not giving it a second thought. And as a disabled person, you know, we all come up with our own systems. We all figure out how to accommodate ourselves, but it's amazing when a big company figures out how, how to accommodate us. When a big company thinks about us, includes us, cares about us. There's nothing like representation. So yeah, I got, I got emotional. It was a big moment for me and um, I'm sure it will be for, for anybody who receives it. Said to them, like, I don't think this is just a good gift to get a, a loved one who's blind or visually impaired. This is a good gift to get any loved one because it starts an important conversation about diversity, inclusion, accessibility, disability, um, blindness with young kids or with family. And these are conversations that can be really awkward or difficult to have, or you don't know how to bring it up in a safe, engaging, fun way, especially with kids. And kids are the ones who it's most important to talk about these things with, because when you, when you learn about these things as a kid, it's normal to you. And we need disability, we need accessibility to be normalized. And so, yeah, I think it's just incredible and I've been really pleased to have gotten to be a part of it in any small way. And, uh, but yeah, when, when Mr. Bennix saw me crying, he got even more flustered and he wanted to get to me even more. And when finally we were reunited, he was like beside himself with joy. He was so happy and excited, which was adorable. And we're honestly just, so bonded like he's so incredibly loving and sweet and I, I certainly see why when he had his first failed guide placement and then COVID hit and Mira was unsure when they were going to be able to open again and everything was up in the air Benix was getting older they needed they really wanted to place him somewhere and I can see why they placed him in the hospice center um, because he is like so incredibly calm and sweet and loving and of all three guides, he's definitely the most empathetic. He definitely is the one who, when he has seen me be upset, he's right there. Like, not just wants to sit with me like Gallup used to. Gypsy had no time for it. She would literally get out, get it's up true. and leave the room. Yeah. If, she, if I was crying, she would leave the room. Gallup was different. He would come sit with me if I asked him to and he'd snuggle. But Benix runs to me, like kisses my face, puts his paw on me, wants to help me. And um, so I can see why they felt he was a good, you know, fit for hospice work. And they didn't want such a quality dog to go to waste. And Mira does place dogs in other jobs, as many service dog schools do. Um, if they're not a fit for guiding, mobility, or service, which are their three main programs, they've placed dogs at airports, hospice centers, hospitals, nursing homes, um, as PTSD support in first responder units, like fire stations and ambulance bays. But usually they place dogs that are really talented, but not a right fit for any of their specific programs. Whereas this was obviously a great fit for guiding just due to COVID and his age due to an already failed placement pre-COVID. Um, they were concerned not knowing when they'd be able to place him again and if he'd kind of age out of guiding before they'd actually get to place him again. So I can see like all the reasons they would have placed him there. Um, and that he would have been great. And I'm certain now, I didn't know when I mentioned that the, I assumed the foster family had let him on the bed and that's how he learned. I didn't know he had worked at a hospice center. In fact, I didn't even know he had been placed at that time, I don't believe, in a, a previous guide home. So um, it makes sense to me now. I'm certain that's a skill he learned in hospice because of course, hospice work is really therapy dog work. So getting on the bed, snuggling with the kids would be kind of a standard thing he would have probably done there. Um, but I can also, as many reasons as I see why he would be a good fit, I understand why he wouldn't. He's a dog that loves a challenge. He loves a challenge. He loves to try new things. He likes to figure out hard obstacles and challenges. 
he feels very proud when he figures out how to do the right thing for me. Um, and those are all things he wouldn't really get as a therapy dog. And because guiding is the hardest skill of all programs to train for, I can see why when they got the news that they were going to be able to open up again and start giving out guides and he wasn't thriving in the hospice, you know, environment, um, why they chose to, to take him back and, and place a different dog there. But I don't know, it's pretty special, like, to have a dog that has such a profound past and has touched so many people's lives and both the woman who leads the hospice care center as well as his foster family have both reached out and i'm so so grateful to be in touch with them and to share stories and photos and hear stories and see photos i mean i can't see them but my family can it sounds like you could write a book i know it sounds like he could write a book that's what i said that he could write a book oh i thought you said i i was yeah. like i know mom i did <laughs> <laughs> It's not what it looks like. That'd be a lovely book from them. Yeah. Oh, but stories pieced together. But yeah, he's had um, an incredible life. And I think all the change that he has faced to get to me has actually prepared him for all the change he'll go through in, in my life as somebody who travels frequently and lives between two different cities and um, goes to so many different environments due to my work. Uh, I feel like he's so prepared for all that that constant change and go, go, go. I think and he wants to. He, he, oh, he does. He's he like literally you. is so funny. Like if I start walking home, he gets, he starts to slow down. Like, mm, I don't really want to go home. Can we keep working? Like he, and every time he goes to a new environment, the clip clop pace goes quicker. He's like, ooh, a new place, mommy. <laughs> he's so fun. He loves adventure. But, um, He's the best. You and me. He's very special. He's Aww. incredibly special. He, and he's a gem. I keep yeah. saying he's a gem. I, I know he's touched so many people's lives on his journey to get to me. I'm really happy that I can not only be in touch with his, his previous families, but that they can also be a part of his journey still. Like they can see what he's doing and they can see the impact he's made on my life and therefore the impact they've made on my life because he wouldn't be the dog he is for me if it wasn't for all the things he went through with his foster family who was kind enough to take him in every single time he had a failed placement uh, to be able to, you know, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> All right, well, well you said a lot. I'm, apparently I'm done. I've completely lost track uh, of my... This is 17 minutes later for a finale. <laughs> Typical Molly rambles. Uh, what do you was... think? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think, hey, Betty Boy? Job. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to go take Mr. Benny Boy on a walk. Um, thanks for coming with us for Benick's first day on a film set. And... Um, Again, not sponsored, but thank you to Purdy's for being so inclusive and um, making this effort. Um, I'm really excited. And one of the pieces of feedback I did give them is that I would love to see a world in which both braille and tactile symbols are included because for me, that's the dream. Like to see both braille utilized as well as universal tactile symbols is like beyond the best. And right now we see companies either doing tactile symbols or doing braille and we don't see many doing both um which you know my utopia both exist together um whether that'll ever happen in the world you know remains to be seen but i can always advocate um but um yeah go get you a braille purdy's box because look where are they available at purdy's okay or i don't know maybe you can order them online too yeah maybe i'll leave some info below um if i can get some but I encourage you to buy it, even if you're not blind, even if you don't know somebody who is, because if people buy it, support it, and show that demand is there, they will bring it back. And um, we need that, we want that. So yeah, anyways, um, until next time, you can click up here to see the demolition of my condo, or you can click over here to see my independent night routine with a guide dog. Okay, bye guys.